Do you want routines that work? Who doesn't? Why does it seem so hard to figure out? You're not the only one. Let's figure this thing out. Hi, I'm Misty Winkler from Simply Convivial, blog, podcast, YouTube channel. Our mission at Simply Convivial is to equip women to cheerfully and energetically pursue their God-given callings with wisdom and insight. That includes with cheerfulness. That also includes doing our routines. If you enjoy biblically grounded, practical help for your day-to-day life as a mom at home, then hit subscribe, hit the bell, all the things, stay tuned because that's what you will find here at Simply Convivial. How many times have you sat at the table with your calendar and notebook, listing out what needs to be done, looking at the lay of your week and determining what should happen when? You create a plan to get all the housework done on a consistent basis, so that nothing ever gets out of hand. The first week, you work your plan. All right, the first day, you work your plan. Except that it does take more time than you planned for it to take. That's okay. You know that if you stick with it for a few more weeks, not only will it not take you as long, but you'll also gain an upper hand on your home and eventually things will be mostly clean most of the time. There's only one problem. You don't stick with it for more than a week. Sound familiar? Let's talk about what it really takes to stick with home routines. Grab a basket of laundry to fold while we dig into this topic today. So what happens? What do you do when you make a complete housekeeping routine plan, a system, and you try and by week three, maybe two, maybe day two, it is totally toast. And so are you. I know what I do. I sit at the table with a blank piece of paper and try again with a brand new plan. (laughs) It's time for a new plan, a new commitment, a new week with a fresh start. Again and again, we create whole new systems to make sure everything gets covered. The only thing that seems to change is how long we go between the breakdown of one plan and the next one. So why do most routines not stick? Most of us are great at putting a routine on paper, but when it comes to following that written plan, we fall far short. There are two main reasons for that. First, we lack the skill of follow through. Consistent, disciplined people who have no trouble with their routines have practiced follow through long enough that it's a habit, a character trait. Consistency of this sort isn't necessarily an inborn ability or a personality trait. It's a habit that's been built by repeated practice over years. Most women who have it, for whom it appears natural, began forming that habit in childhood. For those of us who did not form the habit of follow through in childhood, there is still hope. We won't be zapped with the ability to reliably follow through on our tasks simply by designing the greatest routines on paper. We build our ability over time. Second, Our unrealistic expectations feed our lack of consistency. As we work and try to improve, we often strive for an ideal that is unrealistic. Deep down, we know we'll never achieve it, so we lack the heart to really attempt to be consistent. 
Why work hard to meet an impossible goal? If our goal is that a house is never messy, always clean, zero clutter, we'll never get there while we have children at home, no matter how consistent we are with our chores. The only way to get close is to sacrifice our children's fellowship and development on the altar of our housekeeping standards. Sensing this clash of values, we'll give up our housekeeping standards while still berating ourselves for doing so because we haven't identified the true problem. Having routines in place is nice, but routines themselves look pretty dull. Part of their lack of appeal is that we dislike repetition. But the other part is that routines are a backbone. They're meant to be uninteresting and stable, not exciting. We're used to being motivated by excitement, by inspiration. Commercials are loud, bright, over the top because excitement is the easy button when it comes to motivating action. After decades of commercial watching, we're accustomed to having our easy button pressed. On top of that, prizes and rewards, treats, sugar, fun toys, are used most of our childhood to motivate us to do well. Routines are not glitzy, not bright, not fun, not sweet. So we struggle to find inspiration or motivation in them. Cultures that were better about routines and regularity found duty to be motivating. Those societies taught their young that duty was inspiring. Americans, however, have been told that duty is oppressive. And so it's no wonder that stability giving habits are difficult for us. We can't undo our culture our enculturation, our upbringing, but we can start down a new path. We start by acknowledging that the easy button isn't here. Even the routines themselves once in place aren't an easy button, although that's often the promise we give ourselves when we try for consistency. We have to continually remind ourselves that virtue itself really is rewarding, even if it isn't, fun, easy, or sweet. One mistake I have made more than I can count is to start making up my routines with only a blank sheet of paper in front of me. I want to create a new set of plans from scratch. Such routines are doomed from the beginning. The best way to build routines, to build habits, is to connect them to the existing patterns of our days. So to make home routines and rhythms that work, we need to connect the new routine to an existing routine. That means we need to begin by even noticing what our existing daily rhythms are. How are you currently starting your day? When do you normally break for meals or transition to other activities? These are moments we can harness tying new and improved routines to these parts of our day. The other mistake that we often make when we write out brand new plans is that we create a full and complete system that will address every area and supposedly fix every problem. Such overambitious plans never come to fruition because it is more than we can manage. We can't manage a full set of routines, a complete system, for two reasons. First, such systems usually do not take into account our actual life and situation. Systems imagined from the ground up neglect to take into account toddlers needing discipline or days spent at the park because the weather is nice. We don't realize how ingrained our pattern of zoning out on our phone with our coffee is. So we think we can just stop it because we wrote that we would on a new plan. We forget that the work needed to get a chaotic house into order is not the same as the work needed to maintain an orderly home. We don't budget for variation in activity, recognizing that weekends that involve hospitality take more recovery work than those that don't. 
systems are rather unforgiving that way. Second, we simply aren't in good enough shape to execute complete systems yet. It's far too beyond our capability, so we crash and burn. We wouldn't say, I want to be in shape to run a marathon, and so sign ourselves up for a marathon on Monday, showing up in running shoes and expecting to just do it. But that's what we are trying to do with our brand new home system. We need to start a routine training program. Just like you'd set up a training program to become a runner, so you can set up a training program for becoming a more consistent housekeeper who manages routines cheerfully and well. Our abilities, our endurance, our skills build up over time with practice. Baby steps added gradually are how we improve our routines and our rhythms at home. There is no easy button and no instant turn over a brand new leaf program. Practice, practice, practice. Building up a small chore after small chore, one atop another over time. That's how we grow in consistency. Your unique home, family, and personality mix requires a unique housekeeping plan. Just cutting and pasting someone else's or taking one from a magazine will not work. I have a free guide that will walk you through setting up your own customized plan that is realistic, baby step sized, and custom fit to your home and your family's needs. Just go to simplyconvivial.com slash clean home to get this free personalized housekeeping guide. Three pages, a few simple steps, and you will be on your way to figuring out your personal training program for overcoming chaos and building small routines into your day to grow your capacity and improve your home management skills. You can find that free guide again at simplyconvivial.com slash clean home, all one word. It will help you to repent, rejoice, repeat.